there's a new class. We're going to Morrowind and Hermes Mora is on the scene. What's going on in 2023 with ESO? Hey guys, it's Dan and welcome back to Unified Gaming. So in this one, I'm going to break down how the Arcanist class, the new regions, the new companions and everything ties together that was revealed in the Global Showcase. In this one, we're going to just take all the key points and just make it nice and easy for you to digest. But if you want to watch it yourself, there will be links down below to those videos. And I want to say a huge thanks before we start to everybody that is subscribed because it really, really helps. And if you haven't done so, do consider so. And as always, a massive thank you to everybody on Patreon who helps make these videos possible. But what is happening with ESO in 2023? Well, there is an awful lot to unpack. First and foremost, the Arcanist class is probably the most exciting thing, and it really ties into the story as well. In short, the story takes place in Morrowind in the Tavani Peninsula, which is an area explored in Arena many, many, many years ago, as you can imagine. And Hermes Mora is on the scene. He is basically looking to find a champion that can help protect this secret that if it is discovered and used by the wrong people could destroy all of Nern and reality itself. So there's a lot at stake. Because of this, the Arcanist class fits into this. The Arcanist kind of draws upon the knowledge and the powers of Apocrypha to really just show that actually you can play in a slightly different way, which is quite cool. The way in which the class is meant to feel is meant to be quite unique. It does, however, have the kind of default format that most classes now have. You've got a skill for offense, you've got a skill line for support, you've got a skill line for defense. The skills are called Peril of Time, Apocryphal Soldier and Creative Room Forms, from what I heard. The way they want this class to feel though, and to play, is more of a combat-based system with combos, which I thought was really cool. The idea is that as you use certain skills, you build up charges, and then when you use other skills, you use those charges, which will then augment the skill or do bonus effects. So if you think of the Necromancer and the Corpse system, it's basically that but around your player. So you don't have to worry about corpse being on the floor and stuff, or you can just really focus on charging up certain skills and then using that burst ability, for example, and doing loads of damage with that extra charge in it. So you have that really big bit of oomph in PvP, for example. They also gave some examples of some of the skills. Apocrypha Gate, which looks awesome. This is basically a teleport. So you put Portal 1, Portal 2, you walk in Portal 1, you go through Portal 2. It's that simple. You can use it to go up and down terrain. They did show that you can go from a ground level to a higher level. So I wonder if that works in PvP from, you know, ground floor onto keep wall. That would be phenomenal. <laughs> like imagine people teleporting up and down. That would be so hectic, but so much fun. Um, they also showed another skill called Abysmal Impact, which basically infuses just the apocryphal tentacle cores and stuff into your army. You basically thrust it forward and lunge at somebody, knocking them over, doing damage. So they really want you to feel like you are kind of a soldier of Hermes Mora and he's really kind of in favour of you, you can use his knowledge. As always, um, we will need to kind of wait and see about balance and stuff, but it has a lot of kind of promise if they get this right. With the region itself, um, they're going to focus on the city of Necrom, which is a city of the dead. It's a dark elf city and the dark elves go there because it's a very religious and spiritual place for them where they bury the dead. There's also lore behind it where Vivek defeated a beast that kind of helped its creation and they can, you can see the bones and the sort of skeleton of some of the beast itself, its spine particularly, that helped shape the city. As of the landscape, it's the typical Morrowind type landscape. Mushrooms, it looks quite alien, but you've got the dark elf sort of vibe to it still, so it's not pure Morrowind, but it's not pure elven, it's kind of that unique culture which I really like. You also obviously have um, some new people coming into the game so you've got some new companions you've got a warden and you also got a arcanist the warden companion is called sharp as knight he's an argonian and he basically is kind of a person that was a lone wanderer if you think of that he's kind of lost his way doesn't really remember where he's come from he's a bit sort of battle hardened a bit wary of the new people and stuff so you really have to earn his trust you don't have a sander who's a red guard arcanist so again drawing into the Arcanist class and he's really focused on a pursuit of knowledge and power and he's obviously got a thirst for that hence why he's now an Arcanist because he's obviously gone to Apocrypha done stuff he shouldn't have probably got these powers and yeah you get the idea um, as always you have to obviously unlock them and they will have skills that will kind of be Arcanist themed and Warden themed but there'll probably be some variation like you see with the other companions you didn't also have a few new kind of systems that they want to work on this year 
They did say there's a big system at the end of the year, which is really cool, and it's an endless dungeon crawl, basically. So the idea is that you can go in with you and a buddy, and you can basically just go into the dungeon, and it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on, on until you die. So I think that's really cool. It gives you a lot of kind of replayability. You can obviously set scores. And go, I've got to level 15. I've got to round 18. Got round to like 80. You can really set those challenges for yourself. And from the sounds of it, I would imagine it's either procedurally generated. So it's kind of, you complete X and it just loops itself. But we'll have to wait and see till the end of the year. The big thing I really like the sound of for just the reveal is the Arcanist class, obviously, and the companion sound cool. But they did for once mentioned the quality of life and actually focusing on polishing the game they said and it was really clear that rich lambert wants to focus on polishing the iteration and people to be able to just polish the game and to go look at it and go we've changed it okay it's not quite right change it again let's change it right. let's refine it till it's perfect and that really fills me with confidence knowing that the game has had issues particularly with update 36 and you know 35 you know questionable and with Obviously, a bigger focus on just getting it right, making the game run, making the game be more balanced, making the game work how they want and players interact how they expect. It's going to make it better for everyone. So I'm really hopeful that this year, and I've, we've said this every year for the past you know, six years, this could be the year that ESO goes from being a good to great game to an amazing game. It has so much potential and it's really, in, you know, Zoss's court now what do they do can they deliver on all of these claims and these promises the arcanist looks amazing from what i've seen so far the story sounds really cool a great landscape to explore with that high verticality and stuff that kind of really cool story as well you got kind of who's going to help you who's not are they on your side are they not what how does the vampires kind of fit into this with the worshippers and stuff you also got the old familiar faces from previous stories so eso has a lot going for it this year the real question as i said is can they deliver so that's really the key takeaways from this. We don't know how it's going to play in balance. We don't know how it's going to work um, with all that kind of stuff. But if you want to access the class and this stuff, you do need to actually pre-order the game or buy it when it releases. You cannot play the class without having that. It is due to come out in June. Um, obviously, the dates may move a little bit, but it's due to come out in June on PC. And obviously, consoles and stuff will be a couple of weeks after. But that's kind of all the key takeaways from this. Um, if you've got any questions or just want to share your thoughts and opinions going, that looked amazing or, or I worry about balance and or are they going to fix bugs? Like, I'd love to know. Just let me know in the comments. Equally, you can join my Discord. There's like 700 people in there. The links are down below. And as always, a huge, huge thanks to everyone that has watched this long and is subscribed. And a bigger thanks to everyone on Patreon who helps make these videos possible. And if you want to support myself there, there is details down below. But I'm going to catch you in the next video, guys. So thanks for watching. Take care. And bye.